One, two, three, go. And and go. <laughs> go. We're good. We're live. I don't have anything well, to say today. I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so hello. And hello. Welcome to Needles at the Ready. I'm Kevin. And I'm Ray. Today is Sunday, April 30th, and it's just before noon here on the East Coast. And this is episode 85. Uh, Congratulations. Thanks. We have 15 more episodes to go. I know. And this. What are we going to do for the big 100? Nothing. We're going to skip it. Oh, okay. We'll um, just go from 99 to 101. Yeah. Great. Um, and this is our YouTube channel where we talk about knitting, crocheting, yarn dyeing, yarn buying, and all that fun stuff that comes with it. Why did you hesitate? Because, so y'all, um, I'm just going to start by saying that, like, we we didn't just break the bank. Like, we shattered it. Like, my coffee cup this morning. Like You know, but I do love that it, you all are trying to hold us accountable um, because yesterday a few people had said... Was that a special yarn event? It was. It was. Yesterday was. Yesterday was. But I was talking is. about some other things that we might have purchased. It's uh-huh. okay. We've done very well in. It's only. It's been four months since our last confession. Since since our <clears throat> uh, yeah. So it's fine. So today will be very chatty. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. I feel I'm like we should say, turn the overhead light on. No, it but, feels dark and dreary. All right. Well, give it a shot. Give it a go. Right now. Sure, if you'd Great. like to. Sure. Um. So not even going to lie. Like it's going to be chatty. Uh, it's going to be a long episode, so please it won't get be. up and stretch. It's get up and stretch. Um, do some lunges. Do some lunges. Yeah, that sounds whatever. great. Like, Watch us on your treadmill. Take a break. Go for a Come walk. Come back when you're ready, because um, we're going to be here for a while. So hope you guys enjoy. And let's start off with our admin stuff. Okay, we have some really cool administrative stuff. So. Um, if you usually don't watch this part or you fast forward or you start a load of laundry or something and you can't really hear us over the washing machine filling, um, put a pause on that for a minute because we have some really fun things to talk about. Yeah. Um, so first you want to start from like, all right. So first we are definitely going to be at Maryland Sheep and Wool next weekend. So if you see us booking our hotel today, yeah, we'll, um, after this we'll book it. So if you see us say hello. Uh, that's one of the, that's actually our favorite part of going. The yarn buying's just extras. Yes. So definitely. and we'd love to hear like when we see you, we'd love to hear like your tips and tricks about getting around the festival. I'm not quite sure what to expect. Um, we just know. But that... I'm already very excited and like nervous, kind of. Yeah. The only thing we've been told is that it's muddy, so to yeah. wear boots. I get to wear my Tims. No. I hate so much. Uh, guys, I can't stand them because they're love so. Them. Um, they're scuffed up. They're loved and they're worn, and they need to be replaced. One day, they're like twenty years old. Not really. No, fifteen. Mm, no, no. Older. Seven. No. Yeah, I think we got them when we moved in here. No, we didn't. We had them in the apartment. Oh, okay. Yeah. It doesn't um, matter. All right. They're so, my. They're delicious boots. No, they're not. They feel great on my feet. They're grotesque. and they're waterproof, and doesn't matter. Um. All right. So Maryland Sheep and Wool next weekend. Yes. So we're really excited about that. So please, like Kevin said, and say then. Hello. You know, Some in, people had mentioned that knit centric thing. Yeah, I don't know what that we is. We have we don't either. We haven't looked at we Anything. haven't looked at that yet. So we're not sure if we're gonna do that or not. We it just depends don't... on our timing and like when we get there and, and what we end up doing. Correct. Right. So and then um, as you all know, we'll be at uh, Knit City, Montreal later on in May. Whenever that is, I forgot the time frame. And I we... think it's May sixth. No. That's next weekend. Oh, yeah. That's Maryland. Maryland. Good job. Thanks. Um, 17th. And we still haven't received our passports, but we will call on Tuesday to get them expedited. So all's good there. Um, Other admin stuff. We had a giveaway. So Kelly from Knit Swag (gasps) graciously donated one of her sweatshirts that you guys have seen us wear. So it comes with four options to choose from. It was nine inch circulars, magic loop. DPNs or two circulars, and we have picked a winner. We have so, picked a winner. If you can get back to us with your contact information, we'll pass it along to Kelly, and she can reach out to you to decide what um, sweatshirt you would like. Yes. And you ready for the winner? Boop boop. Lucia, right? Lucia. I would say Lucia. Lucia. Yeah. Congratulations, you are the winner. Please yeah. um, send us an email, and it says you like DPN. So I'm I'm assuming you will like you would like the DPN uh, shirt, but we'll see. 
So yeah, just send us an email with your contact information. I'm and really we'll... excited for that. For I know. I love the sweatshirt. I yeah. wear it quite often. Yes. All right. So congratulations. That's that. Um, so that's one, two, third ad mini thing is that we have our spring cleaning mail going along. We have a thread, two threads in Ravelry. We yeah. have a chatter in FO that runs until the end of May. And it's just some motivation to get your whips off the needles. Yeah. And it was really cool. Even though we don't have like a hashtag, people are tagging us on Instagram. Um, I saw one that posted uh, a really long, like languishing whip that they've had. Uh, and then they finished it, which was really, really great. So I love seeing that. I think that's exciting. Yes. I, I like to start all finishing some of my things. As do I. Yeah. Okay. And then. And then. Dun, dun, dun. The last ad mini thing. Okay. This is really big. It's like it's really big. Pretty freaking exciting. And I'm going to try not to cry while we talk about it. I know because I um, cried when I saw the image. Did you? Uh, I was close. Yeah, back when I was at work. It was really sweet. It's just really sweet to be thought of. So we had been very lucky that we had been able to partner with our friends, Max and Vincent from Les Garçon. And we are releasing a mysterious podcasters box this is so weird guys so it will be available tomorrow at noon eastern time on their site so it is and we'll have their site linked down below and we'll post on instagram as well so if you're watching this month tomorrow monday get your asses over there (laughs) they will post on their instagram also so the box is going to include Two um, sock sets, one inspired by me, one inspired by Ray. So it's going to have a 100 gram skein, a fingering weight yarn, a 20 mini, twenty gram mini skein. There's going to be two enamel pins, <laughs> two progress keepers, one again for me and one for Ray. Two hand poured soy candles um, from a Montreal based company. Um, I want to say it's Muji, M O O D G I. E, and then a drawstring project bag with an illustration from Max, and then I believe I can show you guys the. Yeah, I pulled up the. Ready? So this is this this, this is... knocked it out of the park. I'm I can't believe we're showing this. I, I feel know. like we started talking about this um, a couple months ago. Yeah, and I, I'm just gonna show right. it. So that is the... So this is the Mysterious Podcasters uh, mystery, cool, box. mystery Box. And this is me. And the owl is Kevin. Do you see what we're wearing? I'm wearing the cardigan I that I'm wearing have now. Wore I thought sweater. you were going to, but that's okay. I didn't even think. And Kevin is wearing the Once in Floral. I'm knitting socks. Kevin's knitting a shawl. There's some books in there, too. Yeah. They've captured everything we don't know the only thing that we know for sure is that it's available tomorrow is that it's available tomorrow. and there's limited quantities they've kept it a little bit of a secret from us too like yeah. with uh so we they shared the artwork yes and we um we got to choose like our scents for the candles that yeah. we wanted to um put in there which i'm so excited about and then um we gave we had some color inspirations and um we kind of have an idea of what they're going to do with the colors and the skeins of yarn. And they look incredible. Um, we chatted with them yesterday and they have everything. Yeah. Um, so, so they're going to do pre-orders. No. Yeah. Pre-orders yeah. tomorrow. So I don't go- know what the quantities are going to look like. This is a huge, this for us. I mean, it's a huge, it's a huge thing. And I'm, I'm so honored. Yeah. Um, and it ships at the end of the month. Yeah. And you know, we show all these clubs all the time and like the, the quality of, of these, these clubs are absolutely amazing and the details that they put into things the stitch markers we have we got one of the clubs today that we'll show in um in our acquisitions section but we're really really excited about that so now you can go fill up your washing machine um or you know if it's tomorrow or for you it would be monday whatever yeah and so thank you to max and vincent for even asking us and we were talking about this yesterday as we came home from um, pick up every stitch, and we left Kate's house. And none, I don't, none of this would be possible without y'all. Like, 
Nothing. Not so, like going to, you know, being able to go yesterday to, um, you know, to pick up every stitch. Thinking about going to Maryland Sheep and Wool, like... Rhinebeck, pick we, up... You know, uh, you'd want to do all that. But for us, it's so special being able to see all of you, too. And, yeah, like, being, like, like, building this community has just been absolutely incredible. And we cannot be more grateful. So, it is a big thank you to yeah. all of you guys. Seriously, like, we talk about it all the time. We love doing this. And you all make it just so much better and allow us some opportunities to do things that maybe we wouldn't have typically done. Yeah. So, thank you. Huh. And that's it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and that's the end. All right. So that's a short episode. That's the admin stuff. That's some good stuff. I'm really excited. So we're 10 I minutes hope in. we can get a box. <laughs> I was thinking the same thing. I'm sure we will. Um, and all right. So that's the admin stuff. Let's, we're going to just chit chat a little bit more and catch up on our two weeks. So We've been little busy beavers. We have. So two Last weekend, we went to Knit New Haven yeah. because we knew we weren't going to be able to come for local yarn store day this past weekend. So we wanted to make a stop there. They had a Della Q trunk show. So we also wanted to go uh, see that, see if there was anything new. And there was just like one new color, yeah, uh, a teal that it was Della really Q has pretty. released. So that's, yeah, it is a really nice yeah. blue. We did, not, we did not get any Della Q. We didn't. And it leans more, t- to me in person, it leans more blue, blue than it does green. So it's more of a blue teal than a green teal yeah right? i agree yeah fully um agree. and then i wanted to pick up some yarn for our trip to pick up every stitch which we'll talk about later so we did that which was lovely and then yesterday was local yarn store day so we went well, wait to... we did our tasting oh my gosh we and then we did our tasting last saturday uh, night s- yeah last saturday saturday night, night. So um, thank you again to the people at Try Treats for sending us a box. We know that they'll be sending another one at some point to us. So there will be another um, tasting. And thank you to everybody for joining us. We had yeah. a really good time. And there was only one gross thing I thought was gross. It Kevin was okay. Um, the rest were like, it was a lot of biscuits. It was. It was, a, it, was a, it was a lot cleaning up the crumbs on the table here. Just saying. Yes. But uh, it was so much fun. It's so much fun just being able to do that live and like, I just like doing the live aspect Me too. of it. So. Me too. We could just sit here and chat with you all forever. Um, yes, yeah, so we did Knit New Haven. We did the... So that was all in the same day. Knit New Haven came home. We did the tasting that evening. Yeah. Um, you know, the weeks have been normal. I did a shop update, and I'll show some of that later. So thank you to anybody who made a purchase from the update. We appreciate it. And then yesterday was local yarn store day. And that was... Lovely. We met up with Kate from the Knitting Posse, and then she drove from her house to Stone Mill, I think it was called. I'm going to pull it up. It was probably um, one of the, if not the best food. Stone Fire. So Stone we went Fire. to Stone Fire Italian Restaurant in Mount Kisco for lunch. Mm. We got to meet up with Jill and jenny so hello ladies it was hello. lovely to meet you it was so nice to have lunch with you you are wait they also um let yeah me, we, we should probably show now. it now they were so sweet um so it was just the five of us it was um we sat upstairs it's a beautiful little place yeah um we were really excited looking at the menu we were really really excited about uh disco fries that they had there so they were, you know how much we love our poutine or our cheese fries with gravy. You yeah. don't really get um, cheese curds so much on this side. But um, they had basically these like cheese fries with gravy, but also, what was the meat? Brisket. Brisket. It was delicious. It was incredible. And this is us with the disco fries. <laughs> Kate must have taken a picture. Did you know she took that picture? I didn't know she took it until she sent it to us. Yeah, really sweet. So it was, uh, it was lovely. It was very delicious. And then I had probably the best pasta I've ever had. I had a very good pasta dish myself. Yeah. I highly recommend um, that place. I think next time we go we should up do that it. way, that, for sure. that should be a regular yeah. stop for us. Um, so, oh yeah, Jill and Jenny <laughs> gave us each a little gift. We had like little packages waiting for us. They got there first. So we had these little packages waiting for us. Um so they were wrapped up beautifully, and then on the outside, tied to it, was this. And this is lavender from mm-hmm. Jenny's garden. Oh, it smells right? so good. What a difference, like, fresh yeah. 
It is lovely. Mm. And then we open it up Look. and we each got a sock tube and a mini. Look how long. Like, this is oh my ridiculous. Goodness. I could probably get two pairs of socks out of here. Yeah, I definitely could get... <coughs> Bless you. Thank I you. could definitely get two pairs. Definitely a full length, and I would for sure say a short pair of shorties. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's a good idea. And this one, she said, is West Yorkshire, West Yorkshire Spinners. Mm-hmm. This one we don't know, but it's... And- so beautiful, and it's right up my alley. And this is um, a Lolo did it Folsom, beautiful gray. And this is Oink Pigments. Yes. So thank so you very much, fun. ladies. Yeah, we're gonna do. Um, she got one for Kate as well. They, they got one for Kate as well. They are definitely enabling the sock machine. I know buying. I know. So that's something I know. We keep talking about it, but we really are going to look into it now mm-hmm. because this was. She said, like, once you get the hang of it, you could, like, crank a tube in no time at all. They did, like, 10 minutes or something like that. Yeah. Um, So so we're going to do, with Kate, we're going to do an afterthought party. Uh, Kate and Kim. Oh, yeah, and Kim. Might be, yes. Yeah. Yeah, because there's there's a lot. Yeah, there's a lot. So how sweet was that? Very nice. Thank you so much. I love that. Yeah, it was so nice. It was really lovely. So, yeah, we had lunch, and then... Um, we had it to pick up every stitch. It was my second time there, Kevin's third time there. Yeah. We, um, it, I, I don't even know if there were like words. There were so many people. It was so busy. Felicia and Karen are the, the owners of the shop. They are, like, bless you. What's going on? I'm sneezing. <coughs> no, I know, but I just was, to, I just, I know what a sneeze is. I just was too. I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I don't mean like what's going on with you. <laughs> oh, I just meant like what's going on in the world. It's easy. <laughs> so yeah, um, pick up every stitch. We got there just after two, and Felicia and Karen are and their staff. They're just oh. phenomenal. Um, tons of people there. We finally got to meet Vincent in person. I hugged the um, shit out of him. Yeah, we've met Max three. T- we've seen Max in person three times. Four, four times. times. Four times. Right? Yeah. I think so. Maybe. So, yeah, something like that. So it was great to finally meet Vincent in person. Um, so they and- had the trunk show there. Um, I, for those of you that didn't know, they had a lot of lovely yarn. They also had two um, two special skeins of yarn that they that they had there, which we luckily were able to get them. Because we got there a little bit later, they opened at 12. Um, stuff was just flying off the shelves. Yeah. I'm really proud of them. I think they did a really good job. Um Everybody was so nice. We met such incredible pe- people. And we will not remember everybody's name. No. So I'm sorry. But Kim and Jana were there for from Knit Together with Kim and Jana. Um, it was yes. really nice to be able to hang out with them. I feel like we usually see them in passing. And like we've ch- like obviously we've chit chatted and yeah. like texted and stuff like that. But it was nice to spend like a longer period of time. Absolutely. All together. Yeah. Um, we met our friend, new friend Rachel, who. He's adorable. Adorable. She's. We have a good picture. We have a good picture. Yeah. Well, pick up every stitch has a good picture. We took us, zero pictures, guys, I, and and that's that's pretty much our mo. So we'll say this too: if you see us out anywhere, like at Maryland or Knit City or even Rhinebeck or you know just at the grocery store, <laughs> <laughs> can you tag us in these pictures? Because we we really don't see a lot of the a lot of. Uh, or we don't take a lot of the pictures. So here, um, if you don't follow, definitely follow. Oh yeah, uh, you know, pick up every stitch. But here's some pictures that they have on their Instagram, um, and here is the one of us and Rachel. So she is a teacher from Mass, I know. and she made her way there. Um, she was staying in town. Here's a picture of the guys chatting, and you have Kim helping. Kim was like super helpful with customers too. She was helping. You mean Kate? No, that's Kim. Oh yeah. Oh, Kim. Duh. (laughs) I just saw a picture of Kate. Here's a nice group shot of everybody that was there. And we got to, not everybody, but a good amount of people. And oh my gosh, I just noticed um, the person at the bottom taking a picture (laughs) too. At one point it was so funny. There were like four people lined up or even more with their, with their cameras. And we just kept, um, we had so much fun just posing for the pictures with the whole group of people. We, you know, the 
here's a picture of the guys. The community. Oh, that's a cute one. Yeah. I don't know if I saw that one. Aw. It. I mean, just a lovely time. The store's fantastic. Um, so if you're ever in the area, definitely go. Yeah. They. Um, I just can't thank them enough for for having us, and uh, we stayed for dinner afterwards, which was really, really sweet. Yes. Um, we got to socialize. We sat down and knit for a little while it with did. some people, which was great. Yeah, it was just, it's just nice chatting with you all. It just, there's when a we feeling, get to see you. you know, when you're around, like, other knitters. makers and knitters and people who just love this, and they're, and everybody is just so generous with their time and their, like... And just sharing. We get to share stories. Yeah, we get to share stories, talk about projects. And, you know, and not a lot of us have that in our lives. We don't have people that we see daily or weekly or monthly Mm -hmm. that we have that same hobby with. So when you get that chance to sit down with somebody who has the same interest as you, it's really nice to just talk about it. Mm -hmm. So, And on a day like yesterday for local yarn store day or, you know, supporting local businesses like that and seeing like... I mean, Felicia and Karen worked there, and the whole staff, they, they worked their butts, butts off. off. It was very busy. Yeah. They were constantly on their feet, helping the customers, like, recommending yarns, answering every question that anybody had, looking up patterns. Like, yeah, they worked their butts off. And then to, like, to be able to sit down at the end of the day, and, like, I lo- I, I was, like, looking at them, and they looked exhausted but happy at the same time. Yeah, Just, for sure. It's so nice when you, you know that it's a local business. Like, we're helping to put food on their table, and... That's why I also love like on this. <laughs> that's why we buy yarn. That's, that's the right. only reason. That's that's it. There's we're two buying, reasons. We're putting food on your table. Yeah, there's two reasons we buy yarn. We need to keep this full so we have a great backdrop yeah. for doing why this. Why are those skeins going a different way? Um, because I don't know if I had space to put them anywhere. Um, mm. And that's my purchase from New York a couple weeks ago. Mm. Um, and yeah, but so that's we, also yeah, and I think that's also why we share a lot of. Um, like independent makers and businesses on here, you know, to kind of get the word out because it is so important to them. Yeah. So um, anyway, that's, that's, and your... then, you know, who else we got to see? We got to see. So last year on, um, local yarn store day, her we sweater went was gorgeous. To, I know we went to Connecticut we sheep and wool, which we couldn't go to this year. I kind of do. We were talking about that yesterday. I wish they would have it a separate weekend from local yarn yeah. store day. Um, but last year we went and we got to meet, Kate's friend, Deb, who Kate um, teaches some knitting, a knitting class also. So Deb's one of the students at the class. But then we also got to meet Angel, who's another student at the class. Mm-hmm. Um, I know that there's... Oh, a, look. So this is... Jill and Jenny. Jill and Jenny. With Kate. Wait, did we get a picture with them on our own? I don't know. <gasps> Kate's really good at taking pictures. She's really good at taking pictures. What am I Good doing? job, Kate. Dance? Yeah, Kate, you're fantastic. All right, sorry. Go so, on. So, yeah, so we got to meet them as well. We got to meet some, um, and I don't recall her name, and I'm sorry, uh, a lovely woman who um, sent us a fantastic package oh, yeah. last year um, with some baby knits in it, and they were phenomenal. She's a gorgeous knitter. Um, just so many people, and we talked about so many projects, and I don't know, oh, like, I know it's redundant, but we really can't say thank you enough to everybody you know, who talked to us yesterday. Yeah. It really is the highlight of doing something like this, going to a yarn store, going to a yarn event. It's what it really is all about for us. So I think this is the sweater that she wore. I believe that's what she was wearing yesterday. But this is our friend. That's Deb. And she's a beautiful knitter as well. She She does beautiful color work. Mm -hmm. So it's great to see her again. And I think that's kind of. Yeah. It was just, it was lovely. We we chatted with a bunch of, a bunch of you yeah. and and we just loved every minute of it absolutely so that 24 minutes in and now we could get to some knitting um i have one fo in two whips you want to know how many fo's i have how many tell me i'm so excited to find out zero, zero. this is Good like job. one of the first times i think I've... <laughs> such a lot no i think i really don't have any i do have one thing that i want to talk about it was an fo from last time okay um that I was, I'm now able to kind of share a little bit more information. I didn't want to do that as a test, you know, as a tester, you know, I didn't know if it was okay to, to share and like, it's gotta be hard as a designer. I didn't want to put any, any more pressure, um, on them, but 
these are the socks that I did last time, or I showed last time, and they, dun dun dun, my goodness, my, um, good notes? Yeah, I'm getting a lot of things. Okay, so these I showed last time, and these are socks knit out of uh, Woolens and Nosh, and using a beautiful, like, Dutch square heel dutch heel uh garter and a garter stitch toe um they're shorties they're they're absolutely <coughs> lovely i absolutely I, I can't say enough about this yarn but the pattern is are is the alacrity socks and it's by denise DeSantis, earth tones girl i was lucky enough to test for her so she's worked she's you know taking her time i'm not quite sure when it's gonna um be launched but I wanted to share this with you all so that you can follow her on Instagram if you don't already, Earth Tones Girl. Um, she also has a podcast on YouTube, and I'm, I'm sure you all know who she is. But this is the pattern. I'm not sure if it's going to look like this, uh, the, co the cover page, when they're, um, when they're knit. But put that on your radar, and I'll make sure that I post on Instagram as well. So follow me on Instagram if you don't already, uh, Ray J Knits. And I'll... Um, I'll post when these come out, um, but definitely follow Denise to see, uh, you know, when she will release any more information. But I have to say, I wasn't sure how I, f and I think I talked about this last time, how I felt about having a garter stitch heel. Um, like, I didn't know if it was going to be too, like, you can feel it on the bottom of your heel. You definitely can't. It just feels super squishy. So I'm really, really excited about that. Um, so now I can wear these. I wanted to hold off one more time because I literally got um, permission to share everything like right after we were done podcasting. So I wanted to share that. Denise, you're an amazing individual. Your patterns are always so nice. She has the No Fear Shorty Socks, um, like kind of like a class almost. There's different videos and you can see there are instructions on like knitting in um, – magic loop with two deep with dpns with two circulars nine inch circulars she really covers all the bases and that was really that like that series of videos is what gave me a lot of confidence to keep knitting socks yeah and, you know not get frustrated with the process and learning new techniques along the way so yeah and they're beautiful socks. yeah they the are so the so heel yeah and the heel is cool because it is a gusset heel too i don't know if you can really see that it might not be coming out um well, but it is a it is a flap and gusset, but the construction is cool that it's like it's literally a square, which is really neat. Very nice. Yeah. So I'm happy I'll be able to share that, um, even though I don't have, like I said, any FOs, but oh, these are so pretty. What is that? That's, oh, that's your, my kit. That's no wonder kit. why I think it's so pretty. Um, I don't know what else I have to say, but I did knit these on nine and circulars and, um, 2.25 millimeter, 72 stitches. So I did the large and yay. I'm excited to wear these. Nice. Thanks. Great job. Okay. All right. So, um, I do have quite a few whips though. My FO is this beautiful. Oh, this is gorgeous. Y'all. I can't tell you how happy I am with this. So this is my Moon Bumps wrap by Max the Knitter, Maxim Sear. Here is his version. Mine is knit out of the recommended yarn. The recommended yarn is Moon Drake Fua Fua, which is a... It's like a brushed cashmere. So it is 70% um, brushed cashmere, 30% superwash merino. It is lovely to work with. It is a pricey yarn. Yeah. So if it's something that you are going to knit, do keep that in mind. I will say you could get away with knitting it with three skeins. It's still pricey with three skeins. <laughs> and you and it recommends spin cycle. So I used spin cycle that I already is had in stash. Is still the first skein? That's the one skein. Oh. So... I use Spin Cycle Summer Love. Summer, Summer Love. Loving. This is the colorway. Mine is actually quite different than this one, which is really cool about Spin Cycle or any yarn like this, yeah. is how different they are skein to skein. Yeah. So, 
This is... Show it off. The wrap. I started on this end. And you go... Doot, doot. Oh. I love this transition. It's so good. So yeah, you you start with this really, like, yellow. And as you go through, you go to this, like, darker yellow. And then it kind of fades into this aqua. And then it starts kind of fading back to a yellow. But very light, very almost pale yellow yeah, with some pale. of the aqua almost mm -hmm. more green in here. This is such a beautiful um number one it makes a beautiful fabric yeah the i-cord part here so what you do is you knit and then you do an i-cord and you use your tail and you weave the end to make these bumps and it's such a like meditative process in a weird way like i i really enjoy knitting i-cords mm -hmm. i think they're they're fun they do take some time yeah but it's always worth it in the end. Um, and, you know, the pick up stitches. I love picking up stitches. I actually like picking up stitches too. And I definitely made, you know, some errors along the way, which I'm comfortable with. It's very easy actually to remember. Once I got done with the first, I'll say the shawls kind of knit in thirds. You have an increase section, a decrease section, and then a like knit flat section. Once I got done with my increase section, I just knew the pattern and I didn't have to reference it anymore. Um, and it's uh, it's just lovely. So of the spin cycle, so each of the skeins are 50 grams. So this is what I have left of the first, the one skein of spin cycle. And I have 25 grams left. Wow. So if you have leftover spin cycle, you could definitely get away with it. And of the Fua Fua, one of my four skeins, I have 26, almost 27 grams. And the other, I have 24. So wow. you re, I mean, it may cut it close, but. Are there 50, are they 50 grams? They're skeins? 50 grams. So you should, you could potentially um, knit it with three. Mm -hmm. Some other options are using like a zauber ball oh that's a good idea right you'll zauber have a ball. lot of that left over. you'll have a lot left over mm -hmm. you can use two um two strands of fingering a uh, strand of fingering and a strand of mohair fingering in a uh, surrey alpaca even a sport weight with uh mohair or a surrey alpaca will be good alternatives for you right great idea you could also just knit it with a dk because mm -hmm. you are holding the fua fua double so a DK weight, like I talked about last time, like this Lang yarn, which is lovely. This is Yak. This would be a really good alternative as well, I think. Good catch. Um, so yeah, definitely, you know, you could do this. I think it could be fun, scrappy. Yeah. If you had, you could do scrappy for your moon bumps, your bumps, some fingering oh, weight. Absolutely. Um, it could be fun with a self striping. Oh, right. In between each stripe or your moon bumps are the self striping fingering weight yarn. That could look interesting. So I think there's a lot of options for mm -hmm. this. I think even just following I just love the, the pattern, dashes. I think that's so smart. It really is. But even if you wanted just like a scarf, that's mm -hmm. really easy. A scarf that's wearable. A little easier to wear than a huge shawl. Yeah. This is perfect. You don't have to do the moon bumps. Just follow the pattern and get this length and the, For the shape, shape of and it. everything. Yeah. So highly recommend it. I love it. I will be knitting another one, which you guys will see later. And that is my only FO. Wow. Well, that's a lovely one. I uh, yeah. It's probably one you. of my favorite knits. I think that you've done. It's it's absolutely gorgeous, and to feel it. But yeah. you're right. You don't have to use that yarn. You can use, you know, you can use anything that you have because the shape and the, like the the concept is actually really cool. I uh, yeah. Again, I just the yarn's beautiful. Yeah. The pattern was fun. Um, super easy. Like I said, super easy to knit. So I will say, if you're like me, I sometimes can struggle with the 
there's a part in here where you have to purl two together. Mm -hmm. Sometimes a purling two together or purling together or knitting stitches together, it can be a little, not hard, but they're a little bit tight. So what I do is I actually slip my stitches off. Yeah. Then I place them back on the needle. It loosens them up and it makes it a little bit easier yeah. to either do a knit together or not together. fully off the needle on just slip it to the right hand right i slip the stitches yeah. from the left hand to the right hand back to the left hand to yep. loosen them up and it makes it a little bit easier so if you ever struggle with that i would highly recommend trying that method to that's a great do tip. that um decrease yeah there we go good word good job okay you good job you good job you good job you good job you did a good job and you did a good job everybody did a good job and you um and that's that's it. I and you and you love it. You're gonna love me. I just heard somebody singing that. Today. Did you? Yeah. Me. No. All um, right. Um, all right. Um, so great. Now I have two whips. I have uh well one two three four five ish. What? All right. You just go. I'm just gonna <laughs> sit here. All right. So I don't. I should probably talk about my disaster now. Or should I talk about the, the good things first? It's not a disaster. It was a calculation error. Well, there were no calculations. So it was a... That's why there was an error. All right. I did make quite a lot of progress on this. I did switch bags. So all of you guessers out there, because sometimes we do that when we're watching podcasts and we see the bags come out that the podcasters are doing. We're like, oh yeah, I remember that. In there is... Yeah, blah, 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 blah. true. I switched this up, so. <coughs> this <coughs> is The Dustland by Stephen West. I am, I've been working on this for quite a while, uh, but this is using Moda by Wool Dreamers US. Uh, Wool Dreamers. It is... 100% Lana Marina Entrafina y Manchenga. Manchenga? That's those um, cheesy sheeps. Can sheeps I... That make the cheese. Hold on. I'm sorry. I'm going to interrupt for a moment because I totally forgot to mention two things. Yeah, go so, on. So, I'm sorry. So, one thing is... Don't apologize. I said this was summer love. This is toffee. I kind of want to cross my leg. I'm cross the leg. It. You do you, boo. I'm going to hit you. Um, this color is toffee. Oh, yeah. Good From job. From Moondrake. Yeah. And the shawl is knit, or the wrap, rather, is knit on a US 5. So a 3.75 millimeter needle. Great. And that's all. Sorry. I totally no, that's okay. To talk about that. All right. So this is the Dustlin by Stephen West. The, um, really, the reason why I bought this yarn, besides it looking fabulous, Excuse is me. that one of the samples was knit... Uh, one of the samples was the Dustland knit out of this fabric, and I love the stitch definition. And um, this is this is the pattern. It is by Stephen West, like I said. I got pretty far. Um, so what ended up? All right. So this is what I've got. Um, the I still I think the stitch definition it's been sitting in the bag for a little bit so it's a little uh, wrinkly but the stitch definition on here that's the back you see the short rows here how they're built those are the short rows uh, in the back this is the front of the sweater um, I really do love like I said the stitch definition I think it's a really cool motif um, what ended up happening was I put um, when I got to like the yoke. For the sleeve separation, I, um, you know, I put it on the barber cords. I tried it on, and I felt like okay, that probably fits. Uh, that's I'm probably done there. The this pattern doesn't specify like knit a certain depth for your yoke. It doesn't you know for the sizing or anything like that. He just says, you know, try it on if the if the yoke depth. Uh, is to where you want it to finish up one of these, you know, either one one more or one less of the, the rows to kind of get the measurement for yourself. So I put it on and I was like, okay, um, I think that that looks about right, uh, feels about right. Um, I didn't really know what I was like, where it should have landed, to be honest with you. 
So then I knit more of the body and I got to the point, and I think I did tell this uh, some of the story. I got to a point and I, I tried it on again and I, I wasn't sure, I felt like maybe it was a little bit too deep. Like I wasn't sure how I felt with my armhole where it was. So um, Kevin actually had the recommendation, well, why don't you start knitting a sleeve? And I thought that was a good idea to like close that part up so that, you know, I have a better accurate measurement when I go to try it on. So I knit, I didn't mark where I was, but I think I was probably around here. So I knit the, a, a, a lot more of the sleeve. I finished all of my decreases on the sleeve and then I tried it on again. And when I tried it on again, I realized that the yoke was way too deep. And so when I put my arms into the sleeves, uh, now that I have the finished sleeve, the length of the body, I could probably show you, the length of the body was where I wanted it to be. However, the, look, you can you could see. tell just from that. So how... the yeah, so the yoke was is way 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 too deep. Oh, that's incredibly deep. Yeah, and so I put the sweater on, and though it fits me when my arms are down, when I went to go lift, like the whole sweater lifts right up, and I was devastated. Oh, y'all. Because yeah. I, um, you know, it's a lot of, it was a lot of work and it, you know, I did not swatch for this sweater. However, it was difficult even to swatch for this because there's no, like he, his pattern says, um, you know, however many stitches in, uh, in pattern is like the swatch. And I didn't know like which, well, which one do I, which one do I use to like measure my, um, my stitches? Cause it doesn't say like in you know, the twisted rib or... You know, now, after looking at this, you would have just knit these three. I would have, swatch. I yeah. would have done a swatch doing all three patterns. Yeah. So that would... And then also putting this on, there's an awful lot of fabric. Um, yes. I think it is... Uh, I think it is a little bit too big. So um, I was... Yeah, I was, I was pretty devastated. Regardless of my um, my gauge, I still don't think that I was comfortable enough in my sweater knitting skills, and you know, knowing how deep I sh I wanted to have my yoke, um, so I, I you know I definitely regret some of the decisions that I made. I was so excited just to cast this on. I was loving how it was looking. I love how it feels. So um, I'm frogging this. This is going away. This is the last time that you're going to see it. Um, and, and it's you, okay. But you also know now to measure a sweater that fits. Yeah. And check your yoke depth. Yes. On the sweater that you feel comfortable wearing. Definitely. And also measuring the chest so you can get a better measurement and make sure that you're knitting the proper size. Yeah. Um. So this will still stay a sweater. I'm I have a pattern in mind, but I want to see if it's gonna. I, I'm sure it'll work for me. I may need another skein of yarn or two, um, to make it work. But I I really want something textured with this yarn because I think the yarn really al allows that. You're gonna need more yarn to pop. I'm not sure. Oh, because you still have one more skein. I know, there, but right? this might be a little bit thinner. The pattern I'm thinking of is is for a uh, worsted weight pattern. And um, I was thinking about doing the, um, not whiskey. Yeah. The single malt. Single malt um, sweater by Max. He wore it yesterday and looking at it, I was watching, I was looking at the textures and I was like, that would be really great in this yarn. But that calls for a worse weight. And this is technically a DK weight. However, like knitting it, I feel like it knits up in like, more of a like it, a worsted it's it's pretty thick at first glance i would say worsted right a heavy dk a light worsted yeah. so i think i think so it's be 252 okay. yards per 100 grams and i think like a a worsted weight yarn is somewhere around 200 or so depending you know and, and obviously yarn comes in different thicknesses so i'm sure i can get a uh i will gauge swatch for that and i think what um what i'll end up doing is 
if I need to, you know, add some more stitches, I'll add some more stitches there, or I'll, you know, I'll play around with my um, with my gauge and the numbers of the pattern. Max's patterns are very easy for me to follow. I um, and then this, you know, his the sweater, the so basic. I wore that yesterday. Uh, I'm not sneezing again. It's one of the. It's probably my best fitting sweater. Do you guys close your eye like one eye when you have to sneeze? It seems to help me. That's the weirdest thing I've heard. Yeah, I don't know what it is. But the so basic too. You put a lot of thought and effort into that one. This one you just cast on willy nilly and was like, oh, I'm gonna make this size. Yeah. So I'm not a. Uh, I will not do willy nilly sweaters anymore. No, th- th- but that's okay. Yeah. You know, we we all learn from it. It's this represents a lot of work. Um, but you know, I learned a lot. The lessons, hard life lessons. <laughs> we just have to move on sometimes. So uh, I was originally thinking of Ugh. of like from because my armhole is like way down here is kind of taking out this top part of the yoke, like pretty much taking off the the yoke completely, picking up all of those stitches there and then um, knitting in pattern, but doing decreases instead of increases. Um, s- but again, we I think we we kind of looked at this and I think it's just too much fabric. It, I think it's yeah, just too that, big for me and I I yeah. don't I don't like my sweaters super snug, but this Th- is that's this is a lot of large. positive ease. Yeah. So if you look like here I am. No, it's a lot. Yeah. So all of this this is a lot of this is a lot of There's fabric. a lot of extra yeah, fabric for sure. So, but it's gorgeous. I still, I love the yarn. Um, and it just might not be the right yarn for, for, yeah. for that pattern for you. Right. And I just, I don't, I also just don't, I don't think I'm ready for those patterns where you just kind of have to, I don't know. No, I think know you, yourself. I still no, like I think when, you are. It just, if you don't take the minute to stop and measure the yoke depth. Like if you if you stopped and you measured your yoke depth compared to your so basic, you would have stopped. You would have separated for sleeves much earlier. I would because you would have said, okay, my yoke depth on my so basic is let's say eleven inches. Yeah, and when you hit eleven inches there, you would have separated for sleeves. I think what I need to do is like do a schematic of my my own body. Yeah. Um, and how I how I like things and using that as a as a good template. Bob made a really good point too. He said the same exact thing during one of our um, friends on on knit night. You know, just use that sweater as a template for everything. Yes. And so anyway, um, I you know again I'm trying to look at the positive. I was very frustrated that day. Um, I thought I was not going to knit. Oh, you all, guys! I again. kid you not. He was like, "I'm never knitting." I was like, "Oh gosh, here we go." Just laid on the couch covered himself up with a blanket all dramatically and watch tv yeah sometimes you have to process differently right Mm -hmm. so i am over it now um and i think i have a plan and i'm excited about the plan it's basically this stitch i think the whole time like yeah, and I know too, Michael over um, from Piece for Piece mm-hmm. has knit the single ball on. He said it's one of his best, yeah. if not his best fitting sweater. And he uses that as a schematic right. for his other sweaters, right. knowing the yoke depth, knowing the chest um, circumference, circumference that he wants. So, yeah. and, you know, sleeve length. So if you find that perfect fit, just go with that. Good advice. Thanks. Okay. So, um, Say goodbye. Goodbye. It's, it's out. Well, we out. Pretty. It's really. It, it's like I love the. I love that. But it's okay. All right. So that's um that's that. It's you know I. I felt like I wanted to talk about it because I you know you guys have been really supportive and uh, a lot of you commented and how, how nice the sweater was coming out and I know you're you're there and you you're feeling my pain. And a few of you are probably saying, well, that's what you get. To I know you I people, am. people, I say, Nunya. That's what I'm saying. It's all good. That's what you get. So, moving right along. 
All right, you keep going because I only have two. So. All right, the next I, one, um, I, I'm bringing this back into rotation again. So I just want to show it. This was, um, this is the Ivan. This is a sweater I am knitting for my father. It is a cardigan. It is by Veronique Avery uh, through Brooklyn Tweed. Yes. It's a um, really fun, um, cool cardigan with like tulip sleeves there. I did, I did check with my, with my mom um, who checked with my dad or we kind of like thought about what he might want. And she thinks that he'll like the, um, the, the sleeves, the way that they are in the pattern. Cause I had offered to knit like long sleeves. So I wasn't sure if he would like that, but um, I think he will. So, or she thinks he will as well. So I did um, currently working on the back of the sweater. The yarn I'm using is knit picks, um, simply wool. And I think it's Wordsworth and Wanda. No, that's what mine was. Okay. I think it's, let me see if I can find the tag someplace. I'm not hundred percent sure. It is definitely... But it's this really cool, like, marled, for those of you that don't know, it's this really cool marled um, yarn. Um, It is definitely... It's Wanda and... Winkle! Winkle and Wanda. Winkle and Wanda. Winkle and Wanda. Simply Wool Twist. It is a worsted weight yarn, and it is 100% eco wool. Is there a yard? Is there a yardage on this? 218 yards per 100 grams. And oh, so that my other yarn was too like 250 ish. So that does. So that would definitely be a lighter, yeah, worse lighter stitch. Worsted. So I'll have to just play around with gauge and stuff. Um, I did gauge swatch. Just so you know, I did swatch for this sweater. So, and this is where I was. I really only did about an inch, but I did bring it back into rotation. So I figured I would show you. And this sweater is meant to have a lot of positive ease. Yes. So yep. If so you're was, a little bit smaller or larger, it's going to be okay on this one. Yeah, the the fabric it's making is really really cool. Um, yeah, I I really think that he's going to like it. So uh, like I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this. I'm using the recommended needle size, which is a US seven Chow Goose, and I have I have a few more inches to go. I think before I start decreasing or doing some sleeve shaping. Yeah, you get to do some fashion decreases. Ooh, that sounds so fun. I have to knit this for about 17 and three quarter inches. Um, I believe I'm at like 14. So I have a few more inches to go. This goes really fast because it really it's worsted. Is. There is purling in this, you know, because it is stock and net flat. But, um, ooh. Rot row. Gotta love a non superwash yarn. Your needles, well, your stitches don't don't pull through. So that's what I have. I just wanted to, um, like I said, show it again because it's coming back into rotation. And I'm just going to do a little bit at a time, you know, yeah, as it goes. So I may not show this every week, but when I do make some progress on it or some larger amounts of progress, I'll pull it back out again. I'm, I'm, it's, we're getting past the point where he's going to be able to wear it until yeah. probably next year so my goal well, will the fall. be well my yeah my goal will be to have this either done by the fall or by christmas nice yeah because then maybe that'll be his christmas gift okay how many more do you have three all right go again okay um the next one i will show you is another sweater who am i right look at you three sweaters on the needles no this is the Parish Line Sweater 2.0. It is currently in test knit um, by Beth McDonald Stone. I made a lot of progress on this one. It's a fingering weight sweater with a really cool color work detail. Um, the body of the sweater is knit in Holst, not Holst, excuse me. Yeah, Holst yarn, super soft in slate gray. We got these cones a while ago. There's so much yarn on here. It's so nice also not having to like splice them together. Yeah. Um, and the color work part, so that's fingering weight. The color work part is knit in worsted and it's to kind of pop out that color work. It's it's in the pattern and I actually sent her a message. I think I said this 
confirming that because I've never seen that before. But um, she said, yeah. So that's knit with uh, Wool of the Andes, Worsted, done uh, Dove Heather. Please excuse my skeins. They are messy. But hey, they'll get the job done. Doesn't give me anxiety. And this is what I have so far. So this is the back of the sweater. Oops. I'm a little, little on the twisted side here. Um, I tried this on again this morning. I was so nervous. Like when I, when I um, realized my error in the dustland. After trying it on, I was so nervous. I was like, I, I really, I probably need to try this on. And I said, if I would have, no, I would never knit again if this one didn't fit either. <laughs> However, this one fits very, very well. It does. It's like perfect fit. And I have to say, the thing is because in the pattern, it it tells she you. walks you through a lot of it. You know, like this is the length that you know. Certainly, you can knit less or more, but this is the recommended length for the the schematic yeah. in there, and that helps me so much all right so this is what we have so far um the color work like i said it's using the worsted weight so it really i mean it really pops it out i think it looks so cool yeah it's very graphic it's very graphic it's just what i wanted um so i knit from here to here oh wow which is a lot yeah you got a lot um, done in two weeks of fingering weight you know in a fingering weight yarn so i am now done with the body well the straight knitting so now I'm just going to do the ribbing, which is not even ribbing. It's one by one color work, which is going to be amazing. It's going to match the collar. Nice. Here. So I'm going to start on that today, hopefully. Fingers crossed. I have some homework to do. And then, um, yeah, it's like uh, 1.75 inches or maybe two inches. I'll see you know where I end up. And then I just got to pick up and do the sleeves. So I'll do those on my nine-inch circular needles and be, we'll be yeah, well on our way. Sleeves on a finger and weight sweater, sleeves don't take as long as you would think yeah compared well i like you know yeah. the small circumference yeah um knitting so that should be that should be good and it's it it's you know what it is we've watched a lot of tv oh so much so that and to pick up a stockinette in the round yeah um for tv knitting like it's i've gotten a lot done just because of that um so yeah that's this is the and I'm using the recommended needles. Uh, I'm not sure what the release date will be for this pattern. But I, um, I'm i really excited about this. So I, I love how graphic it is, like Kevin said. Um, I marked the back of the sweater so I know. There is some short rows in here, but I have to see how the how the sweater will, will lie before I take this out. I might put a tag. We've got some tags. I might put one on the inside of the collar. Yeah. Rachel, I found it. This is the yarn, remember? She asked us about the yarn behind you. So this is Brooklyn Tweed Loft wool socks. I don't know if they make this colorway anymore, but I think this is the yarn she wanted to know about. I think you're right. right. It's funny because some of you do contact us and say, hey, what's that yarn over Ray's right shoulder? Or what's that yarn over Kevin's head? And so we have to go on an adventure sometimes to figure out which ones you're talking about. So Rachel, hopefully that's the one that you were talking about. It's gotta be. That's the one she yeah. pointed. I pulled up a picture left of like the last episode That's funny. or something so yeah making progress i'm not sure if the sleeves have um have the color work details if they don't I'm, i might add them yeah because i think it might look kind of cool so we'll see how it goes yeah it's but, very nice thank you i'm really i'm really very excited about this and this you know i will wear this to rhinebeck and before to rhinebeck and beyond okay that's that. All right. So my first whip, you guys have seen. I didn't make much progress on it. Um, these are my woolen Zanash socks. The day hike. I think I'm at my toe. I was somewhere like around here. I really focused on this for a good week and yeah, a couple of days. Because I finished this on Monday. And then Tuesday I wove in all the ends and blocked it. So then, since then, I've worked on two other objects. I brought this one with us yesterday to uh, pick up every stitch. Mm -hmm. And I think after I finish this green stripe, I'll do my toe. And then um, I was trying to actually figure out... 
Oh, wow. What? Oh, okay. No, so I was just thinking, if I finish my toe, the next color in the stripe is where I began my cuff. Mm. But I'll have to go through a couple repeats to do the toe. Oh, to make a matchy? Yeah. No, to do the toe. So I'll probably... And then I'll probably go into the heel and see how close I get to, like, the color. Because I've tried not to waste any of the yarn and have to rip out a bunch. Mm -hmm. So I might be able to do the toe and the heel before I get to uh, this color to start the next one. So yeah, it's a 64 stitches on a US 1, which is a 2.25 millimeter. I knit a one by one twisted rib for about 15 to 18 rows. Then I go seven inches. I'm going to do an afterthought and I'm at six inches now I should or I should be just around six inches once I finish this color and then I'll start my toe and then I'll do afterthought heel I do like six rounds of straight knitting before yeah. I start the decreases for it to give me a little extra um, length and because I have a high arch so it helps with that and yeah that's that cool I will move on to uh, let's move on to let's do the crochet. So this is um, blanket number two. I am working on the Rainbow Ripple Baby Blanket. It's a 12-pointed star by Celeste Young. It is a free pattern. It's super easy, super intuitive. Once you really get going, um, you you know it's it's really easy to follow you can do as many colors or as little colors as you want to in this and you can modify things as you go i finished one blanket my plan is um we have a niece and nephew coming on the way and um there are twins which is really cool um not identical but we'll see. I'm so excited for them. They, um, they're, she's, the due date is June. Um, but we're not quite sure. You know, with twins, they can come early. So um, we're trying to send out good vibes to keep cooking those twins for as long as possible. Yeah. Yeah. And then I have uh, my assistant manager. Uh, he and his wife are expecting their second child in August. So I wanted to do three of these blankets because they were super cute. And I did one for our nephew um, like seven years ago, five six years. years, five years ago when he, my, what is time? So anyway, this is the Rainbow Ripple um, blanket and I wanted to do like a rainbow. So this is, is that because it's called Rainbow Ripple that you want to do a rainbow? Yeah. Oh, completely. Interesting. The first one that so I did was original. not a rainbow. You know what? I'm done with you. The first... First blanket I did, um, I had them reverse, so we did uh, red, orange, yellow, green, blue, purple. And here we're starting with the purple. So I was about halfway done with the green or just into the green the last time I showed this. I haven't worked on this much. But I finished the green. I added the uh, white in between each color. So I added the white, and then I just finished the yellow today. So we'll be moving on to the orange after this, and then the red, and then I'm done with two, which is great. This is... I've been doing these i think in the mornings um it's easier for me to like crochet in the morning for some reason i can't like watch tv and crochet very yeah. well um because i still i have to like look at what i'm doing and i'm not a really fast crocheter but um it's all just double crochet that's all you're doing if you can double crochet and chain you are and slip stitches you are golden for this pattern what's really cool is um to get started for actually for the whole pattern, there is a YouTube video, which I ended up having to use the first time that I cast on the first blanket. Um, it was really, I had a hard time understanding where you wanted me to, like where she wanted me to slip those stitches in. But then once you get going, it's, it's like I said, it's super intuitive. So I'm really excited about it. It's, um, you know, they're large, they're larger blankets. Somebody made a really good point that, um, and I'm breaking my yarn with every, color change just to keep it more secure so i'm tying it you know tying it in there sealing it up wherever somebody had made a really good point that 
because I was concerned that it might be too they might be too big for a baby blanket, but they said it would be you know floor time like when you put the baby on the yeah. floor or you know that's acrylic yarn. I'm using Karen Simple's uh, Simply Soft. Um, I did talk about all of my colors, but I don't really know what they are off the top of my head. And I don't have all of the colors in here, but white. So white, the orange is gonna is pumpkin. pumpkin. Kelly green. Oh yeah, the green is Kelly called Kelly green. Good job. The yellow is like sunshine. Yeah, I think. Yep, sunshine. Red was just red. Red was just red, and then the purple was plum. I think it was plum, something like that. Right. Yeah. And then you're using this hook. I am. A Do five you millimeter. Tell them what it is? This is a five millimeter H hook from Clover Amore. Yeah. It's my favorite. They're my favorite crochet hooks. They're my favorite too. Yeah. I don't know. Okay. They're just, they're really comfortable. I feel like I'm keep spitting. But don't spit. Um, Gross. They're, they're very comfortable to crochet with. Um, all right. My last one is the Hatch Hat. It's a new cast on Hatch Hat by um, Emily Green. Is that you, Emily? Yes, Emily Green for Brooklyn Tweed. You guys know I love this hat. Yeah. You've seen it 500,000 times. I'm either knitting it or wearing it. So I'm knitting this out of Brooklyn Tweed Arbor, which is the recommended yarn. This is so the pretty. colorway. I don't have this tag. I think it's here. Heron, right? Yeah. Like the bird? Yeah. So just a very nice light gray neutral. I My other one's like a burnt orange, so I mm -hmm. wanted a gray hat. But I didn't want dark gray or a blue gray. I thought this would be really it's nice. It's like a greenish gray. Um, I don't know about that, but for you, sure. Yeah, it's like a greenish gray. Like yeah. A, like a pine. It could be whatever you want it to be. Like if um, a, if a, a gray, somebody who was gray had a baby with a pine tree. <laughs> That's what I'd see there. Oh boy. Wow. Mm -hmm. That's great. Great. Beautiful description. Yeah. It's just how um, That's what I see. So if you do knit this hat, I forget this and I remembered afterwards, um, after I took it out, the cast on is a cable cast on. You have to slip your first stitch before you start knitting or it messes up your rib. Just an FYI. Um, and this is a one size hat. Super easy. Um, I actually really like doing the cable cast on. It's a pretty therapeutic for me i like the flow of it and this is knit on a us3 which is a 3.25 millimeter um i don't believe you don't use uh, multiple sizes of needles i don't believe no i think it's just one no yeah it's just yeah. one and it has because there's so much ribbing like it yeah, so it's just some variations of ribs, like a one by one, three by one, maybe a two by one or a two by two, something like that. And it comes with two different options. You can do a beanie or a watch cap. Yeah. And I'm doing the watch cap. I like having the folded brim on it. Mm -hmm. And it's just really nice. You would think with ribbing that it would be awful, and it's not. Right. I think partly because it's a DK weight yarn. Yes, you're using a little bit of a smaller needle, but it still goes pretty quickly. Like, I think I'm almost done. No, I probably have about an inch to go on this section of ribbing. And this was, you know, maybe a day, if that, a couple hours of knitting. I feel like you literally just cast that on. Well, I've cast this on five times. You did. You had a few, a few. It's a little chilly today. It is. And, well, now that we're up here to the thermostat, it's not going to kick on. Yeah. So that's my last whip. I just needed something easy. So... I wanted something easy to bring to pick up every stitch. So I cast that on yesterday morning for the fifth time um, to bring with us to pick up every stitch. And then I left it here. Yeah. So I brought this huge bag, this bag, and I was going to have, you know, a couple projects in it. So I had some choices and I didn't. I had one choice, my socks. And that's what I knit on. But you did knit. I did. And then I pulled out my needles, dropped two stitches and had to correct it. You did. You did great. Yeah, it was so much fun. Um, my last whip, Kevin actually kind of made fun of me the other day. Why? I did during knit night. 
Because my intention was to knit as I was walking and like, uh, talking. So I these bags are incredible. This is um, from Les Garçons uh, in um, collaboration with... Um, Hyden Hammer. Hyden Hammer. Sorry, thank you. And it's got a, a cool strap on it. So I, I was adjusting the strap so that it would be a good height for me to like knit out of the bag. And just want you to know it was perfect so i walked around the store a little bit yesterday um chatted there's a picture of me talking and knitting You're with so vincent special. and it was great because i didn't have to worry about any of the yarn spilling out anywhere i didn't need to find a table i had this great bag over my shoulder okay <laughs> just wanted to put that out there so think twice next time you make fun of me. This bag is honestly really, It is, and I'm bummed I may, a great have, bag. I may have broke mine. You didn't. This morning. No, I don't think you did. I'll look at it. The snap broke on this? Yeah. Yeah. Or it popped off? We'll take a look at it. Yeah. All right, so I am knitting a, uh, a vanilla sock using Kevin's yarn. <laughs> this is currently in the shop. Yeah. This is, um, oh, there it is, skeined up. This is Frozen Grasshopper. We were inspired, Kevin was inspired by, we used to get these um, Frozen Grasshopper coffees. It was like this mint chocolate chip. Yeah, because they have Frozen Grasshopper Co yeah. pie. And so good. From these coffee shop that we used to go to. And um, yeah, so I think you cut too many strings off of it or something like that. I love when Kevin makes a mistake scanning up his yarn. <laughs> yeah, I cut off too many ties on it. So... This skein, or all the skeins I think I get, have typically one, two, four ties on it, and I typically leave two, Yeah. and I only had one left on it. I cut them all off by accident, so I didn't want to send it out that way. So I told him he could knit with it, and he is. And I did. So I cast on, and it, I love it, because it's, um, it's doing some micro-striping, and there's some pooling there, and I love when you have that added bit of interest with like striping a certain way or with a little bit of pooling. So this is what I've got so far. I did a uh, one by one I'm twisted rib. I, ca I cast on with a German twisted cast on. So it's nice and stretchy <laughs> elastic. You can shoot it like an elastic band. Um, it's nice and stretchy. I love the twisted rib. I love the way that it looks in the cuff. Isn't that cool? Yeah. I thought it was so cool. Um, and then the, you know, the, the sock itself is, it's doing like, it's got micro striping yeah. and some like little flashing there. So I think it's, it's knitting up very, very well. These are 72 stitches. Obviously I'm doing nine inch circular needles and, um, yeah, 2.25. And I'm going to do, so here's where I'm torn. I'm torn because I love the way that this is looking. And I, oh, look at it from far away. It's cool. You could really see like those. Yeah, the little. Those those lines too. But then yeah. in between them, you have your micro striping. Super cool. Um, what was I saying? You're torn. You're going to try something. I'm torn with the heel, right? Okay. So I wanted to do a heel flap and gusset. Actually, I wanted to, to do the um, Dutch heel. Okay. But in stockinette, not the and not the garter. Okay. But if I do that, it's probably going to break up the micro striping. Do it in a different color. But I wanted to do it all in this color. So. So I can, because then I was thinking maybe I should just put in some afterthought heels yeah um just so i can maintain the design the second sock may not look like this no most likely i know won't. i love it though so we'll see i'm i don't know i don't know what kind of heel i'm doing yet but i'm really excited to use his yarn and so if you are interested this is how frozen grasshopper will knit up um sim like on a sock yeah if you do what i did yeah it's so it all depends on that's a really like tricky the project thing. and yeah it depends on the size needle mm -hmm. the number of stitches yep. your tension where you like how i cast on right so there's so many variables yeah so it 
it just kind of gives you an idea. I would say more than how it knits up, how the colors play together. All the other stuff, yeah. there's no... I mean, unless it's a tonal or yeah. um, a self-striping, there's really no way to tell right. what it's going to look like. And that's the beauty of it. Because but the colors, like you look at them all together, they're great. Yeah, so it's a brown. So there's brown in different shades of tan. There's a green. And then there's like a, almost like a tealy color. Yeah, I was looking Which for has one. some light spots and darker spots, depending on if it got mixed with any of the brown. And then there are some... Um, very light speckles of a green, but sometimes, depending on how it breaks, this particular color, there's some blue in it too. Yeah, like there's a little piece. Well, that might, yeah. It's you very, just it's see. just really cool. Yeah, you yeah, did and a there's really some good job with this. Pale greens, almost like a pale yellow in there. So it's fun. And that's the fun yeah. thing about doing some, about dyeing yarn is. Even in the same pan. So, for instance, this batch, I dyed, I want to say, 10 skeins, most likely. So, they're in five skeins in a pan. Yeah. And each pan will look completely different. And the skeins look different, you know, from each other. Although, like, it's the same dye stocks being used mm -hmm. you know i mix them at the same time but it's just interesting to oh, see this how is on different 80 20 did we say that yeah it's an 80 20 two ply yeah fingering weight yarn yeah so that is all the whips right that's all i have okay so next up is some Whew. that was a lot yeah so now we're gonna move on to some owl posts okay so if you don't want to hang out you don't have to but we've got some really fun things um to show and our we have some owl posts, and then we'll do our, our haul. Yeah. Hauls. Hauls. Purchases. All right. So first up, this was sent to us from Susan in London, who knows that we are always looking for some patterns for men. And she saw this book and sent it to us. Booyah. Hubba hubba. Viking. Um, hello, Viking. Yeah, for sure. We'll just stare at him for a little bit like look at the hair i know so this book has um a bunch of patterns here's some sweaters i actually really like that sweater Me oh too. that's the one, same one on the front just a different color with a button oh yeah and a button so maybe they're not but here's some more examples of some of the patterns in the book i love that um sweater this one there too is really pretty. Some hats. So thank um, you, so Susan. Thank that you. was really sweet. One day I shall be um, able to knit a sweater from this book. Okay. I want to hold a sheep. Okay. Or a lamb. I want to hold a little lamb. Mary had one. She did. She wouldn't let me hold her though. Oh, I love that. Love that too. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Oh, yeah. Oh. oh, that's fun. Yeah. Oh, I love that little detail there. Beautiful. Look at this little detail on the sweater. Just the arm. That nice little cable. Cool beans. So, yes. So, thank you very much for this. Love. And um, a fun little postcard from London. Yeah, look. We should go to London one day. Okay. I want to ride we need, on... We need passports. I want to ride on this bus. The double-decker bus. And I need to take that down to the Department of Mysteries. Okay. Just saying. I'll go with you. Okay. Okay. Um, all right. We also got this stuff. Okay, so Kevin's going to have to help me with this. Okay. So this is from Lindsay um, Deegan. So she has a... Um, this is her branding, which is super cool. Yeah. But I threw away um, the tissue paper, and I wish I didn't because it had her branding on it as well, which was really cool. Um, so these are handmade tools. So there are, um, I'll, I can show these cause I know how I know what to say. <laughs> so these, egg, these are two different acorns. So these are for your, oops, are for your, um, darning Tap needles. Yeah. Tapestry, tapestry needles. needles. Little place to keep your tapestry needles in there. Hey, guys, this is so cool. And look. This one 
is for your stitch markers. What? I know. So it's got a flat little base. You could just sit there with your stitch markers inside. Right? Yeah. How cute are these? I love it. So they're all like handmade. I, I don't even understand how that's possible. But um, and so cool. I know. I, I think these are. We'll have it linked. If Deegan.us. Yeah, I we will. The, it will definitely oh, be down in the show notes. It. Yeah, um, and then she also included these um, latch hooks. Yeah, latch hooks. Yep. So these are actually also really good for um, if you dropped a stitch and you need to pick up stitches. These are a really good way. I. We've never had one, so I'm kind of excited to have these. I've never used one. I've seen videos of somebody doing this, um, I and I've saved it, actually. And it's when they were repairing a hole in a piece of knitted fabric and the way that they measure the yarn that they need. And then they use this to kind of pick up stitches and pull it through because it catches it. So it goes in with it open. But as you pull it through, it closes this so it keeps it locked into place That's really so cool. that it doesn't fall off. Like it, I So mean, that it makes sense because she says that it, you know you can help make weaving in ends faster or tucking in your ends faster. So yeah. you probably just like pull it pull it through like that. Yeah. it's. Um, I've only seen a couple of videos using it, but I think that they're super cute. I love both of them. This I know, is me too. very nice and flat. Yeah. And they're light, so they're, they're not heavy light. in your hands. And this one's just um, fun. And the detail on these is great. The finish on them is yeah. very nice as well. Smooth. Yeah. So thank you very much for yeah, sending these super along. Yeah, cool. Look how cute the little bag is. I know. I always get excited too when we finally get to show these things off I to know, you guys. I know, me too, that they've been sitting. And know. then we get to use them. Yeah. All right, cool. So, so we'll, thank have, you, Lindsay. we'll have that link down below. Thank you so much, Lindsay. That was really, really awesome. How fun. Um, but look at how fun. Like the packaging and everything. Yeah. I know. I thought that was a really great detail. Yeah, 100%. I love packaging. I think packaging is so important. Um, we, we talk about this all the time, to you know, just with us. is It's part of the experience of getting something is all the little extras, the packaging, and all the details that go into it. Mm -hmm. So. Um, oh, I have more Owl Post. This is a funny one. This one's fun. So. Benny of Rebe, you know, we talked about March Madness. So our friend Nancy from Trilogy Yarn and I had a bet when the Yukon men played the Gonzaga men in the semifinals, maybe for the tournament, I think. I'm not quite sure. So the deal was whoever's team won, the other was going to send them some yarn. So if your team won, the loser was going to send yarn. Unfortunately for me and unfortunately for Nancy, the Gonzaga men lost. Fortunately for you. Fortunately for me and unfortunately for Nancy. I thought you said unfortunately for both. I, who knows? I don't know what I say most of the time, so okay. it's very possible. So Nancy sent me um, a lovely package. So first it came in a nice um, bag with her logo on it, Trilogy Yarn. And sent this... This fun package. So cool. So first, we have... Careful. Scissors. They're like those shears. They're dangerous. And then some extra darning needles. Because you can never have too many No, now we can put those in our little acorns. acorns. And a measuring tape. And then some yarn. First up is one of our it's favorite um, such a colorways good color from Nancy. Way. This is whiskey. You have this in. It's in my um, slip extravaganza shawl. And I have a coffee talk toque. Yes. Out of it. Yeah. I believe Michael has a coffee talk toque. He of does too. And then this is Bob's garage, garage rather, and this is a Schitt's Creek colorway. Oh, let me do this. So this is a beautiful light gray, and there's just so many fun speckles mm -hmm. in here. There's some greens, blues, like oranges and browns. 
And they're on her MCN base, which is such a luscious base. Merino, cashmere, nylon. It's so good. Yeah, they're both 80 10 10. Yeah. This is on her fingering. Mm. So this is her plush. And this, I believe, is on her DK. Yeah, MCN DK. So thank you, Nancy. Very happy to receive these in another bag because you can never have too many bags. No. no, sir. And I think that Guys, was... buckle up. This is really, there's a lot still to go over. <laughs> yeah, so like I said, we shattered the bank. We didn't even break it. It's done. Just took it, threw it on the ground, and the floodgates opened. Mm -hmm. So Look how much shorter I am than you. That's why people always think that I'm the taller one until they see us in person. Wrong. I'm also sitting farther back. So, like... Now, do I look shorter? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe I have a larger torso. Maybe. 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 All right, so up first, we made some purchases. Oh, crud. No, let's do this. Wait, I left... Let's do some clubs. Okay, I left some purchases downstairs. You did? Yeah, two things. Tell me. Um, this... Um... I got it from Knit New Haven. What is it? It's like a little black hole. Okay, I'll go get it. All right. So, all right. I'm gonna do you do want to talk about this one? I'm going to do a non. Yeah, I'm going to do a non club. Oh, non club. Okay. Yeah. Great. So this, in just as much as we enable y'all, um, somebody enabled me. I got a message on Instagram showing a post for this dyer who's I haven't heard of the dyer before. It is um Vita Lifestyle. And they are out of New York. So I purchased this sock set. It is a 75-25 Merino. It is 463 yards for the full skein. The mini is 92. And this is from an ice cream inspired colorway called Mint Chocolate Chip. And you know, that is my favorite ice cream. So I saw it and I thought, I should purchase it because I did use my mint chocolate chip ice cream. Ray used it for Reese's love note, right? Reese's? Yes. Reese's love note. So I was like, oh, I'll replace it with this. Thanks. You're welcome. Oh, Kevin, why do you do such a thing? I didn't even touch that shelf. I'm sure Just you now. did. Which nope. one? this one yeah when you pulled out that spin cycle that's fine it's like a house of cards it is it's a very delicate balance so that was that now we're going to club since you're back welcome back thanks for joining did you talk about those no i i talked about my mint chocolate chip i haven't talked about any clubs yet great all right so club number one that we'll speak of oh where's the card card we have to do something with this room. I know. We have to get organized. Well, here goes club number one. This is from our friends over at Lake Arson. This is their Mysterious Sea month number two. I believe everybody sh would have received it because they showed it on theirs. Maybe? Yeah. I don't know. Actually, they did not. Last episode, they said they talked about it. Didn't we show this already? No. But here it is. If we did, we did. If we didn't, we didn't. It's worth but showing again. We're going to say... I don't think we did. If you haven't received it... <gasps> it's so good. Here's your warning. Five, four, it's a long three, countdown. two, one. Boom. <sighs> All right. So this is the Mysterious Octopus um, here, which is so good. So there's your stitch marker or progress keeper. There's an enamel pin. That matches. Oh, it's so good. And a cute freaking sticker. So these are similar, like, kind of what you would get with our box, I guess. Yeah. We'll have, I'm curious to see what these would look like. I know. I know. Um, I don't know. I'm really excited. Anyway, so this is the Mysterious C. There's the artwork. And this is like a beautiful burnt orange kind of with some really dark black or like i would say black speckles I don't and know. this color is one of their colors called uh vanilla's ice blue yeah this here 
and it is on their BFL mm-hmm. sock. So 80% BFL, 20% nylon. So it's so good. Yeah. Just great presentation. Yeah. I have to figure out what I'm going to do with um, with them. I loved being able to use these in one project. I know. The I'm... last time. So I need to figure out a three skein. I would love to do a blanket. I know I need more than three probably. But I would love to do a blanket with with this. Uh, and know, using the minis, like striping them somehow or something. You know what I would do with a blanket? I would do a blanket with leftovers of all of their clubs. Like you oh. have you've you have a used lot a lot of their I did. Yarn already. I think it would be and if yeah. you did uh um, I have a few more a crochet a crochet granny stripe one and do a stripe in the colors in each of the colors until you run or a out corner to corner yeah you could do corner to corner which and... would be really good yeah okay anyway um super cute max and vincent again knocked it right out of yeah. the freaking park i'm i love their stuff so much all right okay so that's that next up is our second month of the Woolens and Nash Club. So we are doing the fingering weight club. Yeah. This will be the s- one that I get to knit with. So we're rotating who gets each month. Yes, this one was the first month. So this is the second month. This is um, Copper Rose. It's so good. So this is on her 90% superwash Targi base with 10% nylon. It's a three ply and you get 411 yards. So here is the color. It has beautiful coppers, a really nice dark green, uh, pink in there, some like a light blue or a light green, mm. uh, a maroon, maybe some white, just a lot of beautiful shades. Uh, it She has shown it on her Instagram. Knit up. Knit up. So really pretty. Really, really beautiful yeah. color. And her advent went for sale day before yesterday yep and we purchased that right up sure did we got two of them one each because it was so much fun last year yeah i actually wore my last year's advent socks yesterday oh my god i have mine on today oh do you i believe i think so yep. i do these are um <laughs> hello these are the them from last year ah pardon me <laughs> um so yeah, that's exciting. And what else? Okay, and then I um, got my last shipment from Going Gnomes um, Club. Their, let's see, their Mystery Kit Club, Earth's Fantastic Beasts, and somebody's talking downstairs. She's playing something. Club Tropicana. Look at I have to buy it. I have to get a new club. How did that start playing? I don't know. She she thinks she doesn't know. So this was um, Earth's Fantastic Beasts. Beasts. So the last animal is a pangolin. Pangolin, which is an armored ant eater. I think. Let's see. Found in Asia and Africa, they're known as scaly ant eaters. Their preferred diet is ants. So um, this one looks complicated, but it's intermediate. Um, That's interesting. Isn't it cool? Yeah. So I still have to do my sloth is still uh, still hasn't gotten any love, so I need to um, get into that. But that's um, going to be next after the sloth, and then as a bonus you get the animal conservationalist, which is a little gnome. Well, not conversationalist. I said Con- conservationalist. There's no Conservationist. L. I was like, there's no L in there. It's a conversationalist. He may be a good conversationalist, or she. Um, and then, so this is the bonus kit. It's uh, super cute. Has like little, um, little notebook that they're taking notes while studying the animals that they're watching. Adorable. Adorbs. And I just noticed on the back of this card a little hint at what the next mystery club is going to be. Oh. 
And so I'm going to have to purchase that. So the 2023 Mystery Kit Club will be under the sea. Um, so we might have to, I have to go visit them after we're done. Any of you guys do this? Are you going to do this? An octopus would be really freaking cute. A felted octopus. What about a imagine? felted jellyfish? No, we're going to do an octopus instead. <laughs> but how fun. All right. So What that... about a dolphin? Maybe there might be. You should do it too. I think the kit was like $145. And you end up getting like... So four, five? I think I got one, two, three, four. You get four animals and then one bonus. So that's actually... that's No, that's not it's a really bad. good price. Yeah. Scan our QR code or join... Scan the code. Um, you can go ahead and talk while I scan. Okay, so next up, while we were at New Haven, I saw this hat. And I really thought... I thought the hat was beautiful. And I wanted to knit that. So the hat is called... All right, this one's 194.25. The hat is called the Foreen hat. It is made... It's published in Woolfolk. So here you go. Pull up a picture. Oh, it's really pretty. And they had a sample at New Haven knit up in the Woolfolk far. Yes. Oh, you're doing it in New Haven now? That's at the bottom of the bag. So no, mine's what... right there at the top. Oh, mine's at the bottom. That's okay. Yeah. So yeah, carry on. Um, Do you, boo. So I got two skeins, very similar, I think, to the colors that they showed, but I'm going to reverse them. I want to go with a dark hat and a light color work detail. So my hat is going to be knit with these two colors. This is going to be the main color. This is going to be my color work section. And the colors are 13. Make sure you find that in your Crayola box. And one. I don't know if they really have names on here. It doesn't look like they do. So one, 13. This will be my main color. This will be the contrast. I think it's really pretty, and I'm really jealous that you're using the wolf folk because I really, I thought that was, um, I would like to knit with that one day. I was like, what the heck's this? Oh, I see what you did. So is this, is this supposed to all be pick up every stitch? I don't know. Maybe. Okay. All right, you're up. Is that all you got? From Knit New Haven? No. Oh. oh, okay. Do you want me to keep going with my Knit New Haven stuff? I thought you... Okay. okay. I mean, I can go too. Yeah, I thought we could go back and forth with Knit New Haven. Sure. We really plan out these podcasts to a T, so we, we went off book. We did. We spoke about it. We went for a two and a half mile walk we this did. morning. We've been doing really well. We have. And we really discussed what we were going to chat about. Chit chat. All right, go ahead. I was looking for my other skeins of yarn of these to see exactly how many I they're have. in one of these two cubes i know i just couldn't find it unless you actually don't really have any no i totally do i know i do that's right well because the whole point of me buying these is because we already had some you guys probably remember you can probably you can probably tell me where i put them so um at Knit new haven i found this colorway a while ago uh, and they only had a few skeins but i loved it so much i think they were i think i got two already or three um, the colorway is called Chocolate Milk, and it's by Blue Sky Fibers in their sweater worsted. What? Why don't you just do your simple malt out of that? Single malt? Single malt. Well, so this is uh, um, superwash wool oh. and cotton blend. So um, I love the color. I don't know what it is about this color, this chocolate milk color, but it, it really spoke to me. And I found three other skeins while I was there. So I decided I had to pick them up. So now I probably have a sweater's quantity of this. And I think this would be uh, a really cool looking sweater. And it has, it's supposed to make a really nice sweater, the the yarn I was looking up on Ravelry. And there's some really cool sweaters that, that it makes. So um, I'm not quite sure what dye lot, you know, the ones that I have are already, but I just... So you may have to do a stripey one. 
So I just couldn't resist. So I purchased um, purchased those. You know, I think it's hard when we're when you're in a yarn shop um, to not get overwhelmed with ideas of projects. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you can sit at home and say like, mm, "What was I thinking about that?" But I'm confident with these. So I just okay. I love the color, and they're gonna be added to my collection. Okay. I had another impulse buy while I was there. Yeah. Um, actually, all of my purchases there were I'm... impulse buy. I um. I. Th- <laughs> there was a sale. Oh, I know where we're going with this one. Yeah, please continue. There was a sale on cotton yarn. Um, do you have the pattern? Because I don't even know the name of the pattern. I do. Please continue, though. And I, I love this part. I love this part for you. So, I thought that a sale, a sale, you can't pass up a sale, right? Sometimes. Well, you could. Mm hmm. So, um, I thought maybe I'll knit myself a tank top. This is called the Summer Friday Tank by Kevin Haggerty. And I've had it in my queue for a while. Ray saw this yarn and thought he was going to knit a tank for himself. Um, Not thought I am going He to. is. And let's talk about how much you love working with that yarn too. So I wasn't a huge fan of the, of working with this yarn when I originally got it. But it was some like mosaic knitting and slipping the stitches may not have maybe have contributed to that. Um, so this is Dapple. Dapple is a sixty percent merino and forty percent um, wool, American wool, cotton. No, oh merino, it's merino and, and cotton. cotton. I love the color. I saw the yeah. color and I was like, oh, this is absolutely gorgeous. One of the things though is that. Because it was a sale yarn, and they're they're not bringing it back right now, um, is that the the dye lots are not all the same. So I'm gonna see what happens. Are you gonna have another striped sweater, kind of like your chocolate milk? But look how pretty. Those are clearly um no. This one. It this depends one's... on. So you know what it is. It's our look overhead. It. It's our lo- lighting are overhead See, light because they're all like they get to be the same and then they're different and the same but different so when i'm running down the street with my chainsaw and in my tank top nobody's gonna be looking at the potential <laughs> be like, that's stripes. a different lo- lot number so there are only four skeins i there are no sleeves so i'm hoping that four skeins will be enough this kind of reminds me right of that like sweater i think it was called the dustlin that you were knitting and you just no, no, kind of no. wung it i didn't do anything with this yet i will swatch uh-huh. i will definitely swatch uh-huh um but i'm you know i'm excited to i don't have a tank top knitted tank top so this will be a knitted tank top i'm hoping that four will be enough and um are these 100 gram skeins 50 oh that's not gonna be enough that's not gonna be enough i think they're 50 Oh no, we we did the we did some math. We did some math. It might be an, we'll see what happens. It might be a crop top. <laughs> Who knows? Or I can do different Actually, I can add some different colors in there. I could stripe it. A striped tank top would be cute. You should have So this is called blueprint is the colorway if I didn't say that already. And, and I think you Dapple already have Brooklyn blueprint, Tweed. so that's probably why you bought it. I think the original one of the original colors you bought Oh, we was might have I might have some blueprint. Mm-hmm. Um so oh, there's Rachel. All right. Done. So that was an impulse buy there. Yeah, let's and you have I another. I have one more impulse buy as well. It was really cute and I think this is what we saw while we were at um yeah, Vogue, Vogue knitting. knitting. It's this cute book of uh wild and woolly knitted animals. It is a naturalist's notebook. It's very clever how they have it organized because it does look like, um, I don't, oh, this doesn't have the pattern in it. So like it's set up kind of like a notebook. There's like cute little like tape and handwritten notes on the side and things like that. But there are 
some really cool animals in here. Like, look at this little, look at this little chimp. And what was really nice too, so when they we had some of them there too. Yeah, when we went to Vogue Knitting Live, we're pretty sure this is the book, but there was a table with a bunch of them. And then Knit New Haven had a lot of samples as well. They had the grizzly bear, which was huge, um, but they are really cute. They are very cute. So Kate, this one, I thought about you. Um, this is a little frog. He's very cute. I don't know when I'm going to have um, all this time. Are you mouthing bad words no. about me? Mouthing bad words. But um, that would be inappropriate and disrespectful. An elephant. Oh, he's so cute. Look, it's a whole family. Look at the family of elephants. All right. So anyway, um, I'm I'm thrilled. Oh, I know that's cute too. The otter. Oh, he's so cute. North American river otter. And look, they have information. Like about yeah, the it's animals. A really it's a good, really cool book. Yeah. So even if I don't knit a lot out of this, I think it um, is a really cool. It's a good talk, coffee talk. Coffee book. talk book. All right. I think those are my purchases from the New Haven. Okay. I have two more. I'm excited for my tank top. Me too. I can't wait to see it finished. So my next two items have projects in mind. Actually, I think everything I bought from Knit New Haven had a project it's intended for. So these, though, I will say the project was unknown what they were going to go with, but they now have projects attached to them. You did a really good job with that. So first up is another spin cycle. This is called Robin's Egg. So it's just some beautiful blues and some undyed. There's some gray in here. Um, this is going to be for... Another Moon Bumps mm. wrap. And then the next one, which I actually have to go back tomorrow and get another skein of this. This is called Stay Ready. It's That one's gorgeous. I, I mean, love it. The gray it. is gorgeous too. This it's, one's well, really No, cool. this is blue. That's what I meant. The this blue. is yeah, gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The gray These is, are grays yeah. and blacks. Yeah. This is going to be for Max's new cardigan. I think it's just called the Bumpy Cardigan. Um, it does call for two skeins of this so i will be knitting that and this will be the color of my bumps and i'll show the yarn that these will be going with shortly how about right now so you can put them together okay um are you prepared i kind of am i'm just confused because this bag has this which is yours okay i didn't know is this all mine yeah it should oh. yes all right so now we're moving on to pick up every stitch so my next moon bump oh, sorry. is going to be knit out of some Moondrake Fua Fua, the colorway sand. And this it's good. is going to be um, my bumps. I will probably cast this on today. Really? Because I love knitting this. Um, Maybe I'll cast on my tank top today. And it knits up incredibly quick, to be honest with you. Um, like I did the decreases in a day. Yeah. And that's, it's not that it's not, a, it's not, not a lot of knitting. It's a lot of knitting. It's, that's what you're saying. It's not, not a lot of knitting. That's a lot of knitting. <laughs> you know, I feel like, <laughs> I feel like we need, we can't buy I, any more yarn. We can't. Um, so I think this is going to be lovely. We have in Montreal. What I wanted with the next one, like I love the contrast and this is going to have some contrast, but I wanted a very low contrast and I right. wanted a light color for the main fabric. I just picture this in the winter when there's snow on the ground and I'm wearing a beautiful sweater, my black bomber, wool bomber jacket and this underneath it it's gonna be amazing Huga, Huga. so that was 
what the spin cycle will go with. And I'm thrilled for that. I they had so many beautiful colors Ugh. of this. There was this blue that was out of this world. There it was, was a very blue similar to this. There was one that was similar to this. And then this, like they had a dark oh which it was, almost almost yeah. became the color. No, but your choices were spot on. And then so I can finally knit with some of my Le Garçon yarn. I bought some more. Um <laughs> So I'm going to knit Max's cardigan. Seeing this like this is is a little. Let's uh, look. We, it do what brings you. What what is our saying? Buy the yarn. Do what you love. Except, except drugs. drugs. Like score. This is going to be my cardigan. This is Louis shade. So it's a really deep yeah. navy, and then these are going to be my stripes beautiful and it's just it's going to be beautiful mm -hmm. this is out of their um british dk so it's 75 percent yeah 70 75 percent bfl wool and 25 percent masham wool and it's a non-super wash lovely loverly wouldn't it um, be lovely and then, this was my last purchase from pickup ever such so this is one of their, uh, whatchamacallit. This was the colorway that they dyed up for Pick Up Every Stitch and exclusive. Exclusive for local yarn shop day. So we each got a skein. This it's is so called Karen's Pearl. Karen's Pearl. This is on their BFL Twist DK, Ooh, which really, is 100% Superwash BFL. I, I know it really is starting to rain now and that's, sad it's all right because part of me had thought about running out to grab something for lunch but with that i'm gonna say no. like what i don't know i don't the know the parlor i wasn't thinking that but oh or we could do like uh oh let's do something let's i know we something. will let's just get through the podcast <laughs> and then we can determine what we're gonna do <laughs> okay thanks so much i feel like i need comfort food after all of this all right so yeah and then there was a second Exclusive That's colorway. Um, thank you. You're welcome. I would have figured that out. Um, that they they offered there, and this is called Vincent in Atlantis. This is stunning. Yeah, that's a beautiful, like... Stunning. Look at the orange. Gray, one. blue, almost a gray, gray teal, almost. Mm -hmm. uh, and this is also in the BFL Twist DK. Oh, it's so good. I wonder. Two hundred seventy-three if... yards per one hundred gram skein. That's a lot of yardage for a DK, no? Do you think maybe a muscle burrow? That would be nice with there. Yeah. Oh, that would be. Nice. Or maybe an Oslo. I think I might. I'm gonna probably do socks with these guys. Oh, DK socks. Like maybe some DK. Oh, it's a hundred percent super, super wash. wash. No. Um, um. Yeah, I wouldn't do socks with that. Unless they were house socks and you weren't wearing them in shoes. I would like to do house socks. House socks. House socks. But yeah, I... No, I want this I want this on my upper body. Okay. Somewhere. Okay. Um, the next thing... Did you, are you done? I'm done with everything except that. And that's not pick up every stitch, so... Okay. Um, I also got one more thing. I, I was very inspired by... I'm very inspired, obviously, the sample knits that you see there. Yeah. But Kim, um, from Knit Together with Kim and Jana had done a, a an Oslo hat for her husband, and it was there actually as a store sample, um, out of Max's camo. Beautiful. It's so beautiful. It this looks is again so on the BFL it. twist. It um, it knit up gorgeous. It I mean, it you literally cast... looks like uh, camouflage. It's you know? really really good in person. Yeah, it's really good. This is a beautiful colorway. So I'm going to do an Oslo. I'm going to copy her exactly. And I talked to her because Kevin's Oslo was a little bit large. So um, she told me that she went down. I think she did like the women's size medium or something like that. Mm -hmm. And it looked like it was a good, really good circumference. Um, I might knit mine a little bit slouchier because I do like a, a little bit more like length. So 
I don't know if you were in the room during Knit Night on Thursday when Jeff showed his, were you? No, I wasn't. So Jeff knit it out of the yarn that we did the swap, the Christmas thing. The, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, he did show it, yes. He showed it, but yes. he talked about it, and he did the size below, below. the size that I made, because I made the large. Yeah. And he did a dramatically different amount of knitting mm-hmm. once you get to the point where it's just a knitting for the head okay so i'll talk to him you can definitely i definitely think if you decide to knit that hat you or anybody watching to that hat is quite large and to go down i think a size than what you would normally knit personally okay done but you should cast it on today i was gonna do the tank top today Oh, cast on the tank top. Actually, I, I should probably just focus and finish the... Blanket. Oh, no, oh, no the body of the sweater. I do have, your ribbing. I have a lot of things. We all do. It's okay. This is what we knit But I, I really... The tank top, honestly, I, I have never done like a summer knit for myself. Yeah, like, me neither. And so I thought it would be really cool to start that so that once the weather, you know, comes, I can actually wear it and enjoy it. This would be a fun summer knit. If you made that... Like used a linen like or a cotton. Mm-hmm. Um, I think this would be nice because it would just keep your neck warm. Mm. Um, on a like on a cool night, this could be a nice little summer net. Yeah, or like a fun like accent piece too. Like yeah. All right. I um. I also. You got like suckered into this somehow. At the I register. did it. It's my fault. Oh, you know okay. because I, when she was ringing us up. Well, really, you up because at that point I had only, I think I had only this, and then this, and these are actually, no, they're not, no, no, <laughs> um, sorry, they, um, I was like, oh, Kevin got so much stuff, and then I saw a basket of this yarn, and I was like, oh, well, I had looked at that earlier. That seems cool. These are scrumptious pearl have yeah. you never heard of scrumptious pearl before? i have i believe they're out of canada if i'm oh yeah I, I might be wrong but i feel like they're out of canada it's in their stripe me up um sock superwash merino 20 percent nylon and they're they're uh striped they're like already you know in a fun ball there um so ready to go i love the colors this is color number two Oh, and they did C O L O U R. So it was probably maybe a Canadian co- company. Oh no, I'm losing. It, they are. <gasps> Look at this. I've lost all of this stuff. What happened? <clears throat> they are out of Canada. Okay. So um, yeah, I thought this was really cool. There was a sample there knit with this and a strand of mohair held together. And I had never knit with mohair before. I knit with Surrey Alpaca. And. So I guess they did convince me to maybe get some mohair. So I got some mohair to go along with this. They helped me choose it. This is the color that I chose to go with this. It's going to be a nice it's combo. It's going to be a really nice combo. Color S uh, 7S, silk mohair, made in Italy, Sager yarn, uh, 75% kid mohair, 25% silk. Um, I don't know. It's So I'm probably going to do... Just a simple hat. I think I'm just going to do a simple hat, maybe a double brim. What was the sample? Was the sample with mohair? Yeah. Was it a hat? I may have missed that. It was a hat. Do you know Mm -hmm. what the pattern was? No, it looked like just a simple pattern. Okay. So I think I'm maybe do a double brim hat um, and then just just knit. If you did the double brim, would you do the brim with mohair too? Or would Uh, you? Probably. Yeah, I would think so, huh? Probably. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then, I oh, think... and then I got one more thing because I saw them at the register, and I'm an impulse buy. So I thought these would be cute for the sweaters and uh, blankets that we're knitting for the little babies. Very nice. It's a little tag you put on it, and on the back you just kind of like choose the care instructions. Oh, that was cute. Um, and then I have one last purchase. All right. So this was um, I've heard really good things about this book. So yeah. this is Patty Lyons' book. It's fairly new within the last six months, I think. So her um, knitting bag of tricks. And I've heard it's just incredibly informative. And I think having any reference books is super helpful. It's nice to go, you know, to be able to go to YouTube and search. But it's really nice 
if you have something specific that you want to know to be able to have some place to go and find it. Yeah. And who doesn't love a good knitting book? So just got this so we could add it to our reference books. I love it. And that, I believe, is all of it. Correct? I hope so. Okay. So next up is what we've been reading and watching. Um, I have read... Oh, let's do watching, because watching should be pretty quick. So watching, we finished watching The Mandalorian Season 3. Yeah. Um, Ray almost cried at the totally. end. It was a really totally. cute Totally. I don't um, know what's wrong moment. with me. It was a cute moment. And then... Rogu made me cry. He's so sweet. We watched... So proud of him. He I came know. really far. He's, he's such mm-hmm. a good fledgling. He is. Um, what else did we watch? So we watched The Diplomat on... That was really excellent. Netflix that is with um Carrie Russell. Yeah. She plays a She's the becomes the US ambassador to the UK. Yes. And it's kind of like a slow burn type of show. It takes a little bit of a while to get going, but once it does, it's fantastic. She's so good in that role and I just love her in all of the stuff like going back to Felicity and whatnot. Um so that was really, really good. I think it has about eight episodes. And then we also watched Shrinking. That was recommended to us during the lo- the tasting video. It's one of the shows you all watched. And it has Jason Siegel and Harrison <laughs> Ford in it. Fantastic. It was wonderful. So good. Yeah. It definitely had... Um... So much humor. Yeah. Ed smart moments. I like agree. emotional scenes kind of. Yeah. Harrison Ford was I mean so obviously good. he's incredible, but he his character was so good in this. The main character, I forgot what his I don't know his name as an actor, but he was Jason excellent. Siegel, I think. Oh. Yeah, he's... it was it was uh it was really, really good. Um the end I was like, What just happened? Do you remember? Oh my gosh! I know. Yes. I was like, "Wait, did that just really happened." <laughs> um, so it was, yeah, it was it was really great watching, and the episodes, you know, are quick. quick. Yeah, like thirty, quick. maybe forty minutes max. Yeah, um, it was very. Um, what's his name? What was similar? I think the same producer. Ted Lasso. Ted Lasso same producer as Ted Lasso. Yeah, like quick, quick witted uh, one liners, like where it takes a second. And you're like, "Hey, wait, that was a joke." Yeah. Um. So really good. And then. Yeah, the cat, all the cast, and that's fantastic. Yeah. Oh, and it has the, the guy. We were watching it, and the next door neighbor. It's funny, he's the next door neighbor, but he was also the next door neighbor in Married with Children, the husband. Mm-hmm. Um, so, just the entire cast is fantastic. Yeah. Um, yeah. And then we started watching, and I'm mad that we did, I but too. I love it. I didn't realize that all the episodes were out, but we started watching the last thing he told me. Mm-hmm with um jennifer gardner that's also an apple tv plus show and it is so good yeah it's based on a book it, um so it's a thriller like mystery yeah. thriller it just really really well done yeah um i thought like hearing the title and like knowing it was a book i thought it was going to be something along the lines of like the ps Notebook i love or something. you yeah but uh no it wasn't it's no. it's a it's definitely like a mystery like like you want to find out what's happening yeah thriller it's very good yeah. Yeah, it is good. Um, and then last night we watched Pitch Perfect because we heard at least, I think, five songs from the movie yesterday while we were getting ready to go to pick up every stitch. So getting ready in the morning and in the car. So when we got home, we just threw it on because it had to be watched at that point when you have every song that reminds you of the movie play for you in a day. And you watch it and you laugh every single time. Yeah. So that's what we've been watching. And then reading, I have finished one book and started one. So I finished reading Ready Player One yeah. by that guy who wrote it. Uh-huh. Um, that one? Yeah. What? I've been really bad with my Goodreads. Holy cow, I just realized. Uh, let's go back. Um, Ready Player One. Book details. Uh, do, 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 by Ernest Klein. So this book was made into a movie and I watched the movie before. Love the movie. The movie is so 
freaking different from the book. It blows my mind. Yeah. It reminds me of the experience I had reading the Half Bad trilogy and watching The Bastard Son and The Devil Within oh, on yeah. Netflix. Mm-hmm. How different they were from each other. Like the character names are the same and then the rest of and the concept of the movie is the same as the book, but all of the events are different. Every single event is completely different um, in the movie from the book. So if you enjoyed the movie, totally read the book. It's a much better experience. I loved it. Um, I'm still debating on whether or not I'm going to read Ready Player Two because I some people enjoy it. I don't know that it's gotten the love that the first book did yeah um and now i am currently reading and i'm hoping to finish it tonight i'm reading a book called the darkness outside us by elliot schreifer this is a sci-fi book with male male romance aspects to it there hasn't been any like naughty bits really um or any like descriptive like there's been mention of stuff but nothing super descriptive that's not to me that's not really what the book is about right good. so the book takes place in the future i think it was like the 2400s like 2464 maybe if i remember correctly the um main character shoot i'm gonna forget his name again i kept saying something and it wasn't it um Um, and, oh, wrong thing. So takes place, I think 2464 earth has been just devastated. There's only two countries left. One of them is called the Federation. The other one is called like, um, Dominica Tria or something like that. I, um, literally have no idea how to it's pronounced so the one character is ambrose and the other is kodiak they're each from one of the countries and they are on a ship going to saturn's moon titan where ambrose's sister has already gone to and there's a distress signal that she has sent so they are going there to check on her, but not as all as it seems on the ship. And they start uncovering stuff and uncovering some lies that they've been told. And it's just, it's blown my mind. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting too, and I didn't like it at first, but now I understand why. There are not chapters in this book. There's parts. Um. So it's like part one. And so far, that's been the longest section of the book. So a lot of it is their, um, the relationship too between these two who are coming from like almost two different countries at war um, and just learning about each other and then uncovering stuff is all yeah. I'll say. Because I can't say much. Kevin without, shared some stuff with me. I was like, what? Without giving away too much of it and... It's crazy. It's really, really good. It took me a little bit to get into it, but it's become very good. And I'm super happy that I saw this on like TikTok to read. And that is all I'm reading. Good job. I um I don't know exactly what I talked about last. So I checked our show notes. So hopefully they were updated. But I finished um, both of the books that I was working on. The House at the End of the World by Dean Koontz. I read that on Kindle. I thought that was a really good book. It took me a minute to kind of get into the Dean Koontz writing style. And oh. um, the story was really interesting. I thought it was um, I thought it was pretty unique. And they he really like he tied everything all up, which was um, I thought which was really good. I liked the characters. It was not what I expected it to be. It was kind of about um, this woman who lives on an island. Um, after she has some tragedies happen to her, she kind of wanted to do like escape from the world, but uh, the, she made a promise to 
her family that she would continue to live and like experience life and all of this stuff. So, um, interesting though, she befriends a fox. Um, there's a little girl who I want to befriend a fox. Me too. The little girl who uh, is like 12 years old or something. She comes from another island. Um, there's some chaos that happens on her island. So they end up hooking up um, and trying to really save the human race, I guess. And they technically don't. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was, uh, it was definitely a thriller. So it was definitely like uh, one of those... Um, sitting at the edge of your seat wanting to know what happens what's lurking behind the next corner and why is it happening the way that it is so if you if you enjoy dean koontz um and you're looking for like i would consider this a sci-fi thriller um then i would recommend that i think i gave it like i give it like three stars three and a half stars the next book the book that i was listening to was um on audible was reckless magic i'm not sure who that's by and reckless magic by rachel higginson thank you for saying that because i just realized i didn't do that with my book okay the um i want to find out who the narrator was because somebody had asked in one of the comments who the narrator was and i i told you all before i was not a fan of this narrator at all i thought she um shoot where's how about all titles because i i borrowed it or not borrowed it but i don't want to screw this whole thing up i'll try to find out um i'll try to find out who the who the the person was what was the name of the book second um reckless magic by rachel higgins sin i think Bailey Carr. I, I'm not a fan of Bailey Carr. I'm sorry. It just, she ruined sorry, the book. Bailey. She really ruined the book for me. Um, it seems like it would right, be like right up my alley. I may read it on Kindle. Because it's kind of like Harry Potter meets um, Twilight meets, I don't know. It's like, it's like a, you know, kids in high school. And they're like, she's learning her magic and there's cool things that happen um but not for me okay i would give the narrator one star um the story three and a half three stars okay is where what i would do i'm currently reading a book called or listening to a book called hell divers it's now that i'm looking at this it looks like it's um a a series of like 500 books probably yeah (laughs) Um, it's by Nicholas Sansbury Smith. It is, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying listening to this. It's also, um, kind of like a thriller in a way. It's a post-apocalyptic world. Um, I would say dystopian society, but really not like there was world war three kind of ended the world, dropped a whole bunch of bombs. They used airships to do that that are like balloons kind of like the old um zeppelin type of style but there's a lot of different balloons and there's their airships with the turbines and stuff but um humanity is split between two airships that's all that's left of humanity and there's 500 about on each airship the surface of the earth is completely decimated and full of radiation and huge storms and whatnot and hell divers are a group of people that are on these airships that go down to the surface they, they dive and dive down to the surface um to like get gear and um, supplies and all of those things that are still left on the surface mainly power like power generators and uh, fuel like fuel tanks and all of those things so as you can imagine um there is some crazy chaos that happens and on one of the dives they find so that there are creatures living on earth now that are like radiated 
crazy things. And um, they have to go rescue another ship, airship. The only, the second airship, uh, like I was saying, there was only two. This The only other airship needed to go um, go down to this area called um, Earth. Hades. They call it Hades because it's the highest radiation there mm. on the planet and everything. So uh, it's really kind of follows one of our hell divers. His name is X and um, the captain of the ship. And it's really cool. What? I just had this memory of something that you did and I don't know where it was. What did I do? Oh, when... <laughs> I love that I'm the butt of the joke. Even no, remember when we were driving in New York and we saw the sign that said dip and you thought I said dab? <laughs> you were like, <laughs> it's like, yeah, dip. It's a dab. Anyway, um, so I <laughs> highly recommend Hell Divers. I think it's great. So far, it's, it's getting like a four, four and a half stars for me. Oh, nice. Yeah, I like the narrator too. He's pretty good. All right, cool. Anything else? I don't think so. All right. I think I'm that's I'm it. exhausted. I know. It's actually not as long as I thought it was going to be. I thought we were going to go towards the like two and a half, two hours and 45 minutes, maybe like super extended and hit four. But we, what? Uh, yeah, I thought we're, we're actually good. This My is normal. would not. I know this course. is normal. So thank you, everybody, for joining us. Um, and yeah, I think that's everything. Yes, so we will. So... Be at Maryland Sheep and Wool next weekend. Um, we have our mysterious podcasters box tomorrow at 12 noon Eastern time. I'm so excited. Again, that's that. limited quantities. I don't know what those quantities are. Join their mailing list if you haven't already. We'll yeah. have Boutique Le Garçon linked down below. For sure. Um, and thank you again, everybody. We hope that you guys have a good two weeks and we will see you in a fortnight. Yeah, and congratulations to our winner. Um, yes. Please make sure you please get back, back get to, to us. us. Yeah. So thank you guys. Look at my heart. Oh, good? beautiful heart. <laughs> I don't even know how to end this now. Bye. Bye, guys. <laughs>